Not having any interest in dungeon crawlers, but having tried very hard to get into them, I was surprised with Labyrinth of Galleria The Moon Society caught my eye. This is a game that I saw from NIS. Huge shout out to them, by the way, for providing moi with a review code. And it this game immediately caught my eye with the really well-drawn characters, the really cool sprites, the intriguing premise, and the really stellar voice acting. With that being said, though, did this game deliver to someone like me who's not really into this genre? Let's talk about it. So first off, Labyrinth of Galleria, the Moon Society, follows Eureka, who is a noble girl hired to find things, to find lost things, which she herself is very proud of being an expert finder. She travels far for this job, and as you play through the opening, we meet a crazy old witch, which gives her some of the wall assignments, kind of a random assignment, to find a spirit. By sheer luck, our girl Eureka is able to pull this off. She then gets a new friend called Fanti, Fanti the Lantern, and she is hired to explore the labyrinth beneath the mansion and discover things that have never been discovered before. Well, because people have died. <laughs> Seriously. Alright, well with that kind of premise out the way, the story is very cute and is honestly the best part of Labyrinth of Galleria the Moon Society and will more than likely be the thing that pushes you forward to seeing the end. In researching this game, I found out that there's actually a sequel, which I didn't know, to a game called Labyrinth of Reframe, which originally released in 2018, which is crazy because with actually, without like researching the game, I would have never known. I never played that one, so I can't really speak to what Easter eggs or hidden things, if anything, are within this game. But I can say that you do not need to play the last one, as no reference that I noticed anyways was really noticed or really needed. So this game seems to be a very standalone story, a very cute one by the way, in itself. Alright, with all of that out the way, let's talk about the things that you probably care about. Let's talk about the gameplay. So as you are exploring the labyrinth beneath, this is going to play for better or worse really like those games of the 3DS era. Like those 3DS dungeon exploration games. And you can even litter the map with your own markers just like those games did. Similar to games like Etrian Odyssey and Persona Q. Now, I mentioned those two specifically because those are the ones that I've actually played before. Uh, the other ones I've just dabbled with but never really dived deep into them. Now, this specific thing isn't a bad thing as the game, the way you move and traverse, it's very up and down, left, right fashion. You can use the right joystick to look around, kind of, and battles play in a very familiar turn-based style as you use these things called puppets. And these puppets are basically souls that got put into paper soldiers that you can create, name, and make just like you want to end up providing you support as a vanguard or rear guard, which just basically means you're going to have supportive types and you're going to have aggressive types. Basically ones that are swords, ones that are bows, ones that are healers, etc, etc. They're all going to end up having different weapons and abilities. Overall, the gameplay was pretty formulaic and wasn't terrible by any means, but it didn't blow me away. And it was the thing that I did find myself, I will have to tell you up front, having to take a few breaks from. As I was asked to go back to the labyrinth over and over and over again, of course, right, it is called a labyrinth game, but I was having to go over and over again to complete what I call task, but this game refers to as like quest. This is basically how you complete the story of the game to move the story forward. If you have traditionally liked games like this, like the two that I mentioned earlier with like Etrian Odyssey or Persona Q, then you will probably really, really gravitate towards this game. But for my personal gaming taste, just me, my opinion here, this was a little draining and a little taxing on me. And definitely wouldn't be my first choice of games to jump into, especially if you're like me who kind of gravitate towards traditional JRPG turn-based games. Also, before I move on from this, when you finish the game, I do need to let you know that you're going to get the pleasure of unlocking a secret dungeon. 
Yep, a secret dungeon is your reward. I'm not going to spoil it or anything like that. I'm just going to say that if you find more pleasure in the story that Labyrinth of Galleria is going to offer you versus the gameplay, this reward, quote unquote, won't feel very rewarding. And like me, I just went, nah, I'm good. I don't need any more. And I just kind of stopped playing. But if the gameplay is what you're here for, then you're going to be like, yeah, this is the stuff. All right, the last few things I said about the game uh, is, you know, all very true. But now I want to transition and talk a little bit about the presentation and, you know, kind of the sound design and stuff. And I'm going to start off with talking about the voice acting, which is incredible and really took me by storm. Every character in the game is voiced really, really well. This goes all the way down to your puppets who do come to life with very dialogue. Now, when you're creating them, you only get a couple of options when it comes to choosing their voices. But regardless, it felt like they were really breathed some life into, even though that the voices you could choose for each of them tend to be the same, you're going to end up gravitating towards more, towards like one or more than the others. So regardless, it still felt varied to me. Overall, I felt like the presentation of the game went right along with the very good voice acting. One thing I always state with smaller games out of Japan is the laziness that comes. And I hate saying lazy because I know that that's not the intention. But the reality is too many games we get from Japan have subtitles only and no English voice acting, which is awful because every time that that occurs, there's always too much dialogue that occurs and you cannot read and play at the same time, at least very well. So I was very, very pleased to see that this game took that extra initiative and was able to voice act everything. The game's graphics, too, are very well drawn. This is a story that's told in a visual style storytelling method, which really worked for the game and really worked for me, honestly. One thing with the graphics, though, is in the labyrinths, where you're going to be spending most of your time, they do vary. So the aesthetics do change, but I never felt myself being like, wow, I can't believe this looks that great. Or I can't believe that I'm in this part of the labyrinth. And eventually, it just kind of all feels like small corridors and doors you have to go through even if the color aesthetic changes now for the music the music was um unnoticeable which isn't a bad thing i think anytime that you're not really harping on the fact that the music's playing and you kind of unnotice it it just means that it's pretty good and i feel like that was the case here the music was serviceable and generally sticks to landing the tone of each scene the game is trying to convey or the area that you're traversing is trying to convey. So overall, I think the music was pretty good. Not stellar, not excellent, but it was good. So that's a good thing. Overall, this game definitely feels like a callback to the days of the 3DS and the Vita. And although it does get my nostalgia heart afloating, after about eight to ten hours i came i saw and i was ready to move on for those who are like really into dungeon crawlers i can really see you and imagine that you're going to fall in love with this game because the story is really that good i can even see you giving it like an eight or maybe even like a nine out of ten but for me who is not traditionally into games like this one although it was better than others i've played it's still a seven out of ten and that's going to be my final rating for the game today. It's a 7 out of 10. It was a game that I can see being good for those interested in the genre. But from all of our outside spectators like myself, it just didn't really hit. Thanks for watching my review. Leave a comment down below and drop an emoji if you have nothing to say, just to say that you were here. Thanks for watching.